Today's episode of The Mom Game is brought to you by our friends at Gateway Buick GMC at LBJ and Jupiter. I know that buying a car can be stressful, but not at Gateway because their slogan is Gateway's got it. And just what does that mean? Well, it means Gateway's got a wide selection of new Buicks, GMCs, and GM certified used vehicles, all competitively priced. Gateway's got it. In these busy times, you want a car dealer who makes things easy and convenient. Well, guess what? Gateway's got it. When you log on to gatewaybuickgmc.com, look for the shop, click, drive button. This allows you to shop from the comfort of your home, and who doesn't want that? In fact, it's as easy as one, two, three. One, select your vehicle. Two, create your offer. Three, schedule your delivery. And on top of all this, Gateway Buick GMC offers complimentary car washes for life. So when you want a dealer who has it all, Gateway's got it. You can find them online at gatewaybuickgmc.com or shop in person at LBJ and Jupiter. GMC, we are professional grade. Experience the new Buick. Episode 114 of The Mom Game. I'm Emily Jones. She is Julie Dobbs. We got a great show for you today. Let's catch up. Let's Let's catch catch up. up. Uh, So, well, we'll get to sports in a minute. Yeah. Um, In sports, 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 sporting around everywhere. Yes. Um, So, I went to the Paul McCartney concert last night. What? I didn't know you were going to that. So, I took the night off. Uh huh. Um, uh, Mike and I got asked by some friends to go and I will say this. I, my mom was super excited about Paul McCartney. Like she, I think she cried when she found out he was coming to Fort Worth. So did she go with you? She did not. She uh, went by herself oh. and was not upset about like, she, she asked me if I wanted to go and I was like, I have to work that night. And then I ended up taking off work to go. <laughs> had to go with but not I, mom. I, to go with not mom. <laughs> but I told her I would go. And then I saw the ticket prices and I'm like, and I'm out. Yeah. No, I'm not paying $800 to go oh see Paul gosh. McCartney, no. but went and th- so I had the night off. So then Hattie on Tuesday morning, which is when the concert was, was Tuesday. She has a softball a play. It's the playoffs. And I was going to miss the game for Paul McCartney for Paul McCartney. And it wasn't even for Paul. It was for dinner before Paul McCartney. And so, and I, I didn't want to go out there and be all dressed and have swamp ass at the concert. Like, no, you know, it wouldn't be fun. And so, but she, she, she got me. She was like like really pouty and she was like and she doesn't show a whole lot of emotion Hattie doesn't she's a tough girl whatever she was I was like what's wrong and she started crying I was like come on come into my room let's talk and she's like I just really want you to be at the game tonight and I was like oh my god I'm like okay let me talk to daddy and so I talked to Mike and I'm like what if I miss dinner I meet you guys at the concert And, and I wanted to be there, Yeah. but I thought, you know, we made this commitment. Um, you know, these are, cause we didn't know the playoff schedule. And so, you know, these, uh, these friends of ours have been kind enough to ask us, you know, whatever we, and I, and Hattie was like, it's okay. You, you need to honor your commitment. And I was like, Oh, oh my Hattie. gosh, I can't oh. deal. Um, and so anyway, so I went and coached the game. Okay, good. And we won. One of those banner mom days. The, when dirt, like- day, the dirt divas are going to the ship. Oh, wow. I mean, it's a four team league. So was it, a, so, <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to talk about that, but so they, this was this. So you have to win one playoff game to go to, to go to the ship. Yeah. Gotcha. But we did finish the number one seed. We had the best, oh. best, best uh, record in the regular season. It has been so much fun. These girls are hilarious and they really are getting the game and it makes me so proud and they're loving it. Oh my god! And then like, you know, we have our, you know, our top girls that, you know, pretty much crush it every game or whatever. But you know, these, the thing that makes me so happy, it's like the girls who are kind of, they're not super into it, but they like it. Um, maybe don't have the, the, you know, the most legitimate bat or whatever. I mean, but they like this one girl, this little Merrick. She is this tiny little human, and she cleared the bases last oh my night, gosh. and it made me so happy. Aww. Like to see, you know. And then we have another tiny little thing named Madeline, and I swear to God, she gets on base every time. But it's just been so much fun, and I love to see them loving the game and having a good time. And 
Um, yeah, because they were like new to the game totally, none right? None of them had ever played yeah. except for one girl. I remember girl. when the Dirt Divas just yes. began, when they were born. Yes, when the, yes. And it was, it's been so much fun. It has been, I'm so grateful for, um, you know, the people who run our league that they allowed us to play because we're technically not supposed to start until third grade. Oh. Um, but they, they let us in. We had, a, you know, we had so many girls in the beginning that we had to form two teams. And anyway, it's just been so much fun. So I'm super stoked for the Dirt Divas. And, and Paul McCartney. I did. And I will tell you, I was slightly underwhelmed with Paul McCartney. Were you? As I, I think you're okay to say that because I, I don't. You think I don't I, know. I mean, I, he played like 800 songs, and I feel like I knew five of them, and I feel like I know enough Paul dollar McCartney. song. I mean, but exactly. <laughs> but I will say this: like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm not a good music person. Are you a huge? Like, are you a big Beatles fan? Not really. Yeah. I mean, I think they're cool. Like, yeah. I mean, well, I don't know. And I, same way. I mean, I understand people's obsession with him. I think he's uber talented. The fact that he's effing 80 years old and doing this shit is amazing. He looks amazing. I thought he sounded great. But I'm not one of those that like, well, the acoustics and you could tell the pitchiness in no. his voice. I'm not into that. I'm like, eh. Um, but it was, it was great. It was fun. I'm so glad we went. Grateful to our friends for inviting us. Um, but... I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not a music appreciator. Well, I feel you know? like if you're, if you're Paul McCartney and you were in the Beatles yeah, and everyone remembers you a certain way because of all of your music that has been recorded. Right. And then you're 80 years old, like without the Beatles. Yeah. It's, I don't know how you wouldn't leave a little bit. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't there, but I feel like it's not maybe what it is in your what everyone's expecting right. in their mind but you have to appreciate it for what it is which yes. is like it's freaking paul mccartney absolutely standing in front of you singing yes my mom went a couple years ago i think it was the first concert at at&t stadium okay when after it was built and uh no you too was the first i oh, went to you, that oh so did i geez that's what i'm mixing up okay um i was at U two as well um so it wasn't the first concert but she did go when it was at AT AT&T stadium and I remember she loved it but it was a little bit of that same feeling like because she lived it she lived the Beatles and Paul McCartney when she was younger and it was kind of like in the highlight of my night I could see my mom I knew where her seat was and I could see her and she was like yeah she's just I love that your mom so so she was by herself oh yeah and I I would have gone with her 12 new friends um anyway my god my mom would have loved to go with her yeah so anyway, it was great fun. Um, but yeah, I just am not an appreciator of music. I don't I don't know about shit. I don't yeah. know about I love music, but guitars. I don't like study. It. I mean, I listen to like top 40. I mean, mm. I got Justin Bieber on the playlist and you know, yeah. I, I'm I'm not I feel eclectic cuz I listen to Coffee House. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I mean but that's I, it. I'm into like, you know, whatever 90s series. gangster rap and yeah. you know. Yeah. I, it's I don't have a very sophisticated But still like I mean, music, but concerts I do, are fun. Yeah, concerts I are fun. I love concerts. They are fun. And I, I need to go to one. I haven't been to one in forever. You do need to go to one. Okay. Uh, it's, we got a sports squirts. We got a sports squirts. And I'm squirt. kind of sad about squirting our sports, but we got to do it. Um, okay. But sports squirts is brought to us by... Our friends at Baird. Friends so at Baird. we talk about our friends at Baird all the time. If you're worried about retirement, um, how expensive it's going to be, how you can prepare for it, this is what Baird is here for. Yes. Um retirement is something that can be a little bit scary and perhaps you don't have a plan. 60% of women don't expect their money to last throughout their lifetime. If you're anything like me, you're kind of living like day to day. You're like, I'm good now. And I think I'm good next year. But beyond that, I have no plan. Um, And that's what Baird is here to help you with. If you look at the facts, women usually live longer than men and we have generally saved less. Yeah. And lucky for us that women at Baird, women have their, no, Baird has a retirement guide, a women's retirement guide geared for us. And it's available at women at Baird.com. That is women at B-A-I-R-D.com. Check them out and start planning your retirement today. Okay. Sports courting. The stars, the stars, the stars are, are done. done. Mavs are not. Mavs are not. Um, the stars, I, I had oh, like so sad. Yeah, I get like super back into it every time. I mean, the playoffs are just the best. Oh my the god, they're are awesome. Just the best. We were texting during that game seven, and I you and lost, the, me. and then I was like. Yeah, you Bueller? lost me. I, Emily? Yeah, yeah. You were, I made it through regulation. I was, alone, and then once, so I was like, yeah. Once overtime hit, I was like, I don't think I can make five. It was it's like a five minute break, right? Yeah. I couldn't make it. Like, yeah. I was so tired. Yeah. These sports. That's, that's bad when you can't just, 
when I, you watch could, the whole game, but you can't. I could not overtime. power. To, I could not. I could not. I know. I was so excited. Well, exhausted. you surely saw enough to see yeah. that Jake Ottinger is the shit. Um, mm. And so that's the biggest takeaway for me. I, I think if I had to like put a bow on it all, I would say the stars um, exceeded everybody's expectations with the team that they had to start the season. Um, no one really knew what to make of it. Yeah. They made the playoffs, which was they, the team and manage my, management might have bigger goals, but I think anybody who's a Stars fan knows that's the main goal. Yeah. <laughs> make the playoffs. Well, and now you look what you have. And look what you have. And then like, look what you have. You Now you know what you've got. Yes. It, in the most important position, you've got a 100%, stud. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And then they took the Flames to a game seven, which right. was further than I think And overtime expected. at their place. And overtime Shit, at their so place. So close. Like, I mean, I heard Razor say it a million times, like, the Flames were the better team if you watch, you kind of right. see that. Yeah. But the fact that they had it down to the last second of overtime tells, I mean, you, when you're in that moment, you're you're fantasizing about what could be if we could just score, right? Yeah. If we could just score, if I we know. could just score, we basically stole the series because of our goaltender and then see what happens. But, but yeah, the Stars season is over and I think it's one that they can be proud of. Yeah, for sure. So this is a question, a pers little personal question. Mm. We get personal here. Um, I mean, it, 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 do you get nervous this time of year? Like, uh, it's the off season. Are they going to make coaching changes? If they do, is Kelly going to go with? Yeah. Or, you, how does this happen? Like, uh, yeah. is he completely separate? I mean, how do y'all manage this? So, like, is this a weird yeah, limbo it time? Is, it is. But we're so used to it. We're kind of unfazed by it, which yeah. is weird. Like, when I talked about living day to day in the <laughs> retirement spot, I meant right. it. <laughs> like, we don't know. I mean, um, most people's jobs aren't on a contract year to year basis. And Kelly was fortunate that he got a two year contract this last time around. So he does have one more year. Okay. So he's safe. The rest of the coaching staff doesn't. Oof. So they, for whatever reason he was off from them. And I think it's because they value him and want to keep him, but right. he has survived six head coaches in, in that turnover over and over and over and over. Yeah. So I hope now someone could easily come in and say, we need to just clean house, you know, right. and he could be, fired but then he would still have that contract so he would right. hopefully get paid but um all that being said like you just have no idea what's going to happen and I think what he was told and I think it was out in the media too it's like it's going to be three to four days Jim Nils figuring out yeah if he's here <laughs> right I think he is but if he is and then from there who's gonna stay so yeah it's a weird weird time and uh all the guys just like go back to Canada, like all the, all the coaches yeah. and everything else. So I think they're waiting this week to see who's going to stay and who's going to go. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, but we'll on, go from there on the bright side. You've got your husband back. You're yeah. Not my husband parenting back. anymore. Yes. Nice. Although I need to, um, give Jamie, Ben and Tyler Sagan a little shit. Cause they FaceTimed him yesterday when we were about to cook dinner Stop it. on their day, one of their bender. And they were like, I'm Stop saying it. bender. Cause that's what the Mavs do. They don't really do a bender, but they all just went out. Um, <laughs> and they're like, Fobsy. uh, uh, that's so awesome, though. I know. But that means they it love it. It was good. It was good. So I was like, just go. Just go. Oh, did he go? <laughs> oh, yeah, he went. Look at you. Yeah. Wife of the year. Oh, I mean, I'm not going to tell those guys. I and know. he was like, he, he, was, he had already said no, and that's why he was home. And he then did. they called him to get him to go, and, and they were so home. So win win for Kelly. Well yes. played, Kelly yeah. Ford. Right? I know. For real. I like, know. oh, no, honey, I passed up a night out with the boys. Yeah. Here I am to help you cook dinner. And he probably told him. He's like, oh. okay, at um, <laughs> 6 07. Whatever. Call, FaceTime me, and what, then Julie will have to say yes. Whatever it was, it was yeah, brilliant. Yeah, okay. no, so I think he had fun, and, and I'm glad they had their, you know, team bonding yes. <laughs> situation going on after that tough run. Um, but yes, the other team. Yes, well, let's talk about that and what's on your feed, because we have a little yeah, tie-in yeah, on what's true. on your feed, which is brought to us by our friends at Early Bird. Thank the Lord. You still loving the Early Bird? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> like, the Early Bird is in the rotation. Yes. Uh, it just calms you. Like, it's just... Like, it's just chill. Like, yeah. it's just, and you know how I am so effing high strung all the time yeah. that like once I get to that place to where, okay, I've got, cause I, I am neurotic and I have to get my shit done in order to relax. Yep. But once I get my shit done and I'm like, okay, I'm ready. I pop a gum here too. And I'm like, it, I, it's, it's just, it's like, it forces you to just chill the fuck out. Yep. And it is amazing. Like I will, I, I cannot recommend them enough. We've gotten some feedback from, you know, listeners that like this early bird is legit and it is, it's, it's, it's amazing. And so we love our partnership with early bird. I hope it never ends because then I'm going to have to, you know, 
buy. I hope it lives um, forever. Have to become a customer. You'd have to yeah. become a customer. Well, but I mean, I am a customer, but we, thanks to our lovely partnership, we get, we get unlimited supply we do. of and gummies. We must um, tell everybody that if you do want to become a customer, yes. which you should, um, with Early Bird, uh, it's just a recreational hemp product. It contains 2.5 milligrams of natural THC. And that's the thing that does the trick. It's that's a little, the thing. little bit. And it's it's legal. like micro. There's yeah, nothing little, you need yes, to worry it about. Is, it's just yeah. a microdose, um, and it is just for recreational use slash sleeping slash just making you chill. Um, there is a discount code. Um, it's TMG. It's good for 20% off a new customer's first purchase. So uh, the URL you can find in our link tree on our Twitter, Early Bird cbd.com backslash tmg and then that discount is automatically applied yeah it's amazing it's amazing okay so what's on your feed now okay yes mavs win mavs advance they're in the final four i mean we, okay. that can pretty much be on our feed because that was everywhere it was everywhere on our feed because um, that's all right but okay so a couple funnies from i i got a i, I made a funny tweet oh um so well actually Actually, I remember thinking DFW you had a funny tweet. airport had a oh, funny tweet. Oh, that was your funny tweet. Yes. And then, but it, it got a lot. It got, do you ever get excited? I like, I'm, maybe I shouldn't admit this because I really, I mean, I don't really pay attention a lot, but I'm like, why is everyone liking this so much? Like everyone loved the, it, it, and I think it's because maybe not a lot of people, fought, maybe DFW it airport was has a lot of, okay. The tweet was, but it, yeah, DFW airport had this like, it was like Luca looking up at Chris Paul or something. Anyway, it was like a funny little meme. And then dfw airport was like hey at sky harbor airport how you doing or something and i thought the fuck have we come to where like airports are talking shit on social media yeah. which was hilarious it yeah. was funny whatever and then uh so i tweeted so i said you know it's I, bad I, when, I said you know it's bad when because they were winning by fucking 80 points or something like yes. it was ridiculous yeah uh you know it's bad when airports are talking smack but it was it was a funny which i think people love because you i pictured like a literal airport like with a little <laughs> mouth like, 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 <laughs> yeah like talking shit to i'm you. dfw airport <laughs> hi i'm phoenix sky harbor <laughs> which sky harbor fucking sucks too by the I'm way i'm flying there ever, tomorrow <laughs> If you ever have to do the rental car shuttle bullshit, it sucks. Uh, Are you Ubering? I think we're Ubering. Mm, you oh. should Uber. The rental yeah. car car shuttle is a complete shit We should have airport show. breakdowns Air- with you on one of these shows because you've oh, traveled yeah. to so many airports. Airport. Yeah. Um, but... Moral of the story is that the Dallas Mavericks are moving on to the and Western Conference Finals. Effing crushed it. I mean, just destroyed Phoenix in Game 7, which nobody saw coming. I mean, if you said you thought the Mavs were going to win Game 7 and that you were confident about it... The home team. I didn't team hear had, anybody even saying that. No, the you, home team had dominated said, every yes. freaking game. People said in that they series. might have a chance in this game. You yeah. know, um, and I was super nervous because, like you said, it, they'd just gotten destroyed every time they were in Phoenix. Yeah. So I don't know what got into uh, the Suns. I a lot of Luka Doncic. God, Luka's so good. Um, definitely gave them all that they could handle. But yeah. they, I, I feel like. I told Kelly or someone, I guess not Kelly, because he was busy. I was watching alone. But I was like, you could tell, like, the Suns, after, like, that second quarter, they're thinking about the beach. Yeah. Like, so their season I was over. Yeah, I didn't get excited till like, five minutes into the third quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I told my kids, actually, they could stay up and watch the game. And then af- they were... And I- but after the third quarter, I was like, you're going to bed. Yeah. I'm like, you said we could watch the whole game. I'm like, this shit is over. Well, it made it pleasant for me to switch over to the stars and not have exactly. to worry too much. We just saw Stress. like the, the score. I did the not bottom. switch over until we were up. Stars were up one nothing. Yeah. Um, but, but best it was a sports fun- night ever. Oh, my God. And the Rangers won that day. And the Rangers won earlier in the day. I, know. I was so proud that you would be able to watch those sports because that would have been hard if they all. I know. Three straight. Three straight. Three straight. And they're not last in the division? They're not. All right. I know. Baby steps. Baby, baby steps. steps. Okay. Um, um, we have a very special guest we need we to. We do. Yes. Uh, it, he's in, we'll call it TMG News Desk because it's, well, it's not really news, but it's a really cool guest um, that we've wanted to have on for a long time. And uh, it's time to bring him in. And time for our special guest for the day. Emily and I have been pretty excited about this one for a month, at least now, because I feel like we're going to talk about many relevant topics that can help so many people. It is Brad Bevel, dog behaviorist. Brad, yeah. thanks for being here. What's hey. a dog behaviorist and thanks how do you become me. one? You're welcome. A behaviorist, uh, I'm worried more about the brain than the body. Okay. So tr- trainers uh, teach the body to do things and behaviorists teach the mind to be. So do you want your kid to be able to do flips on a trampoline or do you want them to be able to sit quiet at a funeral? 
the the latter. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah for calmness, sure. respect, um, understanding when to turn on and when to turn off. I mean, that that's behavior. Okay. How do you become a dog behaviorist? Uh, that's a, actually a really great great question. So it's not uh, regulated in any way, okay. which is why there's so many quacks out there. <laughs> and almost every one of my clients has already been through multiple trainers and and not had any success. Um, behavior, like think about Jane Goodall. Okay. Studying um, apes. Mm -hmm. She lived with them. She didn't go to like ape school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That would like be kind she, of fun though. I go there. Fun. Yeah. Literally lived with them for decades and um, and studied their behavior. So if it, there's a lot of people out there calling themselves behaviorists. Um, that in my opinion are not because they don't sit in a space with 20 to 25 dogs a day watching, observing, and taking notes. Is that what you do? That's what I do. Okay, so where do you do this? Uh, in my uh, in my backyard. Okay. Yeah. And you're just like these people bringing you their dogs to like fix this shit, Brad? <laughs> like We're already cussing. Yes, that's, yeah. I love it. That's how that we roll. very quickly. Th this is good. All right, mom and dad, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, people bring me dogs to fix the shit. Yes. Um, and I've built, so a little background. So I built an ecosystem that is based on human addiction recovery. Okay. Um, because in my opinion, dogs are addicted to certain behaviors that they believe keep them alive. So whether that's anxiety or fear or aggression, insecure, insecurity, they are addicted to these behaviors and these patterns because they keep waking up every day, right? Okay. And an animal's main goal is just stay alive. And so I built an entire ecosystem that's built on the human addiction recovery model, which is first detox, right? So like get them out of the environment that's nurturing fear, anxiety, aggression, whatever it is, yeah? Okay. So boom, detox. Then what's the root cause? Like, why does the dog feel like they need to choose those behaviors to live? Yeah. So then we go, okay, boom, there's the root cause. So let's start working on the root cause. Fuck the body. Right. It doesn't matter. Sit down, stay, come, heal, place will never fix anxiety. Mm -hmm. It'll never fix insecurity. It'll never fix aggression. Like, my dog's aggressive. Oh, we'll teach him place. Mm -hmm. Like, no, that's not how that works. But obedience trainers, that's all they know. Mm -hmm. They don't actually know how to <laughs> fix aggression because they don't understand the root cause and they don't do behavior. So what they do is they do a bunch of management and a bunch of workarounds so the dog goes to place but still feels like, oh, I want to fucking bite that person. Right. Right, mm -hmm. but they're on place while they feel that way. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I do is help the dog let go of that feeling and go, hey, dude, you're aggressive because you're nervous. You're nervous because you don't feel safe. You don't feel safe because the human in your life doesn't know how to make you feel safe. Right. So what if I just make you feel safe? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You're not aggressive anymore. Crazy. Right. Crazy. Right. So then after we've done detox, root cause, rehab, then we have to change the environment that the addict goes back into. Right. Because as as an a human addict, if you go back into the same environment and you have family and friends that are nurturing addiction and those old patterns, you're going to fall right back into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So now this is where the human education part happens. And so mom and dad and family have to totally change the patterns at home so that their addicted dog no longer chooses fear, insecurity, aggression, whatever it is. Wow. Anxiety. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So do you think that, I guess this is like, you know, could go for humans or dogs or whatever, is that aggression or that fear or the anxiety, is that something that is all learned behavior based on environment? Or do you think that some dogs slash kids um, are born like that? What are your thoughts on that? Um, man, it's a tough topic. Uh, I'll just be super honest yeah. with you. So it's a hard question. Human beings are garbage. Uh -huh. And we are breeding for aesthetic, uh -huh. not for instinct. Uh, breeding the dogs, you mean? Breeding not dogs. with each other. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? well, I don't know. I mean, that's you actually go either way. That's actually an interesting topic. But yeah, I'm talking about dogs. Gotcha. Uh, we're breeding for aesthetic. So, like, currently, I have um, 
what is known as like a, what do they call them? These white and golden. Like mm-hmm. a, I don't know. They have a couple of different names, but it's literally a golden shepherd that's white. Mm-hmm. Well, white's a recessive gene for a golden retriever. Yeah. There's one next door to me. Yeah. And so we're breeding for color. And when we breed with color, we get neurological issues a lot of times. Uh-huh. Or if we're breeding for size, we get neurological issues. So humans are breeding for a specific aesthetic that ends up, yeah, I mean, you get the physical part, right? right? But then the brain doesn't function properly. Yeah. Um, so there definitely are some genetic issues because humans are so selfish. It's not about having a balanced instinctual animal that you know acts like a normal canid it's about having a color mm-hmm. or a size mm-hmm. or non-shedding yeah or whatever it is and so yeah there's definitely genetic issues but with that said uh i would definitely argue anyone that nurture outweighs nature in mm-hmm. terms of the issues that i deal with mm-hmm. most humans create uh, the behavioral issues that their dogs have. So if it's anxiety, I guarantee you a human in the house has anxiety. Mm. Guaranteed. The dog feeds off of it. Yeah. So we get all of our dogs through a rescue organization called Legacy Boxer Rescue. We've had, okay. we have three, Boxers. or we've had three. Um, You're a psycho. We have. Well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Well, that's <laughs> not, <Boxers>. not <laughs> inaccurate, but <laughs> isn't that funny? Uh, I bet he hears like a dog breed and associates yeah, it with yeah. a type right of right owner. Uh, yeah. Okay, I know. Who yeah. You <laughs> so, but so we've had three over the course of our, you know, lives as a married couple, and. um, we got a, a dog, Griffey, who died in December, Ken? and he was, uh, they're all named after baseball Absolutely. players. Why would yeah. they be? <laughs> um, and so we got Griffey, and he, we knew he came from a, a bad place. I mean, a really bad place, because it, it, like his, he hardly had any teeth left because he was trying to bite through crates and yeah, whatever. Yeah. And we could never get him. It didn't matter what we did. I mean, we thought we provided this great life for him and all this kind of stuff, but we could never like board him. We could, he could not be around other dogs because he was so aggressive. Oh, okay. And so then when we, when he got sick, we found um, out when they did the MRI that he had like BBs in his head because he had been shot with a BB gun. Like he, he was obviously Perfect. terribly, terribly cared for before we got him. Right. And I remember talking to the doctor and I was like, I promise we didn't shoot Griffey with a BB gun. I swear. No, yeah. it, was a, it was a shotgun. Yeah. A shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. Shot well, whatever. Shot. I don't know. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> somebody shot the dog, and there was there BBs was in like his head. A bunch of BBs in his yes, head. Yes, okay, they were revealed in the uh, in the uh, MRI. That's crazy. But anyway, so I wonder, like looking back, I mean, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, and I don't have the opportunity to do it now with Griffey. But th- how do you change that? Like, if you're talking about a rescue dog, that you you don't know what the hell happened to them in their first three years. I mean, yeah. we got him when he was three. Um, it doesn't matter what happened. Yeah, it's just a story. You're guessing. What, what I look at is oh, I have a nervous, insecure dog who's not social. Yeah. I don't care about BBs. I don't care about whatever story you want to make up because we don't know. Right. Right. But what I have in front of me is a nervous dog who clearly wasn't socialized properly. So then I'm going to slowly build, first of all, trust in me. Because the bottom line is a dog is going to view, I want a dog to view the world through my filter. So Brad Bevel, how does Brad feel? That's how I feel. Right. Right. Brad feels calm. Mm -hmm. Right. And also Brad's only introducing me to balanced dogs who don't feel threatening. Sure. Right. And so we build that trust over time, over time, over time. And then we start to add different energies, different types of dogs. So we'll add like a little bit more excited dog, uh, a puppy, a senior who's like, no nonsense, don't don't mess with me. Right. And you start to add all these different energies, different ages, different, um, you know, dog types. And then all of a sudden the dog goes, okay. So the deal is as long as Brad is around, I'm safe. Right. Right. So I want that dog, that boxer to view the world through your eyes. Yeah. And he did his own. He did great with when we got Izzy, she was a puppy and he did great with her. Um, so so he's not aggressive. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He's not aggressive because aggressive dog. I've, I've rehabbed a bunch of aggression cases. Aggressive dogs are going to attack to hurt. Right. With intent to hurt, not to keep away. Yeah. To hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he loved her from the beginning. Right. So he's not aggressive. So we just needed to build some social skills. Right. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. So you mentioned the aesthetic and and humans being garbage and the breeding and and all of that. Did I say humans are garbage? Yeah. Okay, they are. It's okay. I mean, not all of them. A lot of them are. A lot of us are. Whatever. Um, Not you, Julie. Sometimes I'm garbage. No, you're not. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally be garbage. Uh, what do you think of all these doodles everywhere? <laughs> so many doodles. There's so many doodles. So I did, I did a podcast one time with a, uh, a dog trainer. Uh-huh. And he has this, this game at the end of the podcast where he names a breed. And you have to say the first word that comes to mind. Uh-huh. And he said doodle. Uh-huh. And I go, cha-ching. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you're true. Like, <laughs> you're like, I need you to be my client if you have a doodle. Literally pay my bills. Just right. attach um, doodle to it. And you're so in doodles business. are just mutts. I mean, it's, it's just a cross, right? Yeah. Between whatever and a poodle. Um, I'm bummed because breeders, again, once again, have ruined uh, what would be a really nice mutt. Uh-huh. If, they, if they were breeding properly it would be a good mutt uh-huh. um, but they've ruined them because they're doing size and they're doing color and um so crazy yeah it's sad um what do i think about them they're dogs yeah yeah they're dogs i, lo- I love them um what's interesting for me is because i'm real into human psychology too and yeah dog psychology obviously um but the human psychographic that gets a chihuahua is the same mm-hmm. the human psychographic that gets a doodle the human psychographic that gets a pit bull like y- you know what you're dealing with on the human side by looking in my database at like what the breed of the dog is mm-hmm. and so it's not so much what i think about doodles it's what i think about the psychographic of the human that gets the doodle right you see what, what do you I'm have Julie? Falling and i was gonna see if he could guess <laughs> What kind of a dog you have? I literally just met you. I know. <laughs> that's, that's what makes it even more fun. I know. That's what will make it funny. I have no idea. Australian Shepherd. I won't make you wait long. Boom. Give me some. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Now I'm psycho because I have a boxer. You, you're and you crazy. Get nuts and, she's and got, I got an knuckles. Australian Shepherd. Sorry. Hell yeah. The fuck does boxer mean? Uh, well, I mean. So I'm psycho. That's it. They're fun. They are fun. <laughs> I love them so much. But Australian Shepherds are brilliant and were bred for something that I love. Like, I, I just love ranch life. I yeah. love the country. I'm, yeah. I, my first love and soulmate was a border collie. Oh. And seeing her herd cattle and herd sheep, even though she didn't know what she was doing, like, it gave me so much joy mm-hmm. as a 16 year old boy who wanted to be a cowboy. You know, and so I just have this affinity for for herding dogs. I, mm-hmm. can't, I can't help it. Yeah, Kelpies, Australian Shepherds, Border Collies. I just like even uh, Great Pyrenees. Obviously, not herding dog, but they protect, you know, sheep. Right. Yeah. Like any dog that's a real working breed, I just love. Yeah, it's fun. She's a lot of fun, and of course, we're not on a ranch, so that presents a little bit of of challenges, right? It does, yeah. There's certain things that set her off. Um, just for background, she. She was a Christmas present puppy (laughs) for my kids. Um, And she's just six months now. Um, And she's, I feel like we've done a, I've been working really hard with her and I feel like we're doing a pretty good job. I left my full-time job a couple or less than a year ago. So I didn't get her until I knew I could be home more and actually get her the exercise and all of that. The kids are doing pretty well with her. The main thing is jumping up on people that we're working on. So... Um, space if you think about herding breeds yeah how do they control herds they get in front of them they use space they nip at them Mm -hmm. they use space first Mm -hmm. they only nip if they have to that's touch Uh uh-huh they use space first so space is currency for a herding dog Uh uh-huh so the more you control space the more powerful you become um, so a dog j- jumping on you, that's a space notes. issue. Uh-huh. You're not owning your own intimate space. Uh-huh. So no dog should jump on you. Right. But that's yeah. not a dog jumping on you thing. That's a you don't control your space thing. How do I control my space better? Show them your boss. I mean, we've introduced the knee. Uh, if you go to BethelDogBehavior.com uh-huh. and sign up. <laughs> there we go. Consult. <laughs> hey, come on. We can do a little, a little trade here. I'm into Being it. on the show. Let's do it. Um, no, I will for sure. And then the other funny thing with Australian Shepherds is just, oh, my God, the certain things that set her off. Um, a scootering child, a lawnmower, a vacuum. Things that are moving. Anything that's like on the ground, like hovering and moving, she loses her shit. Yeah, but think about it. 
<laughs> yeah. What are Australian she's, shepherds? She's bread? trying to herd them. That's right. Herd oh, the vacuum. Yeah. Oh, for and sure. That piece of her spirit isn't being fulfilled. Uh huh. So, like, dog psychology 101 starts with fulfillment. Uh huh. Period. There's no point in even trying to alter a dog's behavior whenever they're not even fulfilled. It'd be like if I don't get Tex Mex and margaritas multiple days a week, don't even talk to me. Yep, same. <laughs> You know, if I can't write music, if yep. I can't work with Mother Nature, if I can't be outside, don't even talk I'm not going to be me. happy. I'm going to be a miserable human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And same with dogs. Like, don't even start to try to alter behavior when you're not fulfilling their basic instinctual needs. Right. Especially with a dog that's a herding dog. That's what they do. Right. That's what they were born and to brilliant, do. And brilliant. Right. Yes, so the she's brain great. needs to work. Yes. Yeah. She's great. We're having fun with her. Okay. So I've I got, might go sign up. I've got one for you. So <laughs> I... Uh, Izzy and Griffey were together. She is only known life with Hold Griffey. Hold on, who's Izzy named? It, uh, yeah. Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Oh, nice. <laughs> so it's, it's hard so to find. Is Griffey named after senior or junior? Junior. Oh, that's weak. Yeah, no, it's not. No, it's <laughs> not. I'm kidding. No, it's not. <laughs> we could debate the Griffeys. Psycho <laughs> weirdo. Does, does, dog. Does, what? does he wear his hat backwards? He absolutely. Okay, good. <laughs> um, okay, so Griffey, I mean, Izzy had only known life with Griffey. And then so when he died, and we'd never had issues like bathroom issues or anything like that with Izzy. Okay. Soon as Griffey died, she started, She now she hates the crate because Griffey's not with her, which I get. So I wanted to let her out it's so she wouldn't have to be in the crate because I don't want her to be in there alone. And then she would, but she started peeing upstairs, only where there's carpet. And then she, for, if we're gone for an hour, whatever. So then I put a baby gate up at the top of the stairs. Mm. Now she can be out for literally nine hours and won't pee. Yeah. It's what it's, what's happening. Okay. So <laughs> there's a couple things. Um, the first thing is the dogs. Uh, so like, wait, who passed away? Griffey? Griffey died. Okay. So Griffey passed away and Griffey held a social role in the family um, that the humans should have held. Okay. And so when Griffey went away, that role disappeared which completely changed Izzy's behavior. Sure. Um, so when we leave it up to our dogs uh, to have roles that maybe they shouldn't have, it's going to affect the whole pack whenever that role goes away. Okay. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is the whole family's energy changed the second that Griffey passed, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we probably became a little bit more... Um, What's the right word to use? We we started we, we started treating Izzy a little bit differently because we're emotional about the loss. Sure. Yeah. And um, as soon as Izzy protested a little bit in the crate, we're like, oh my God, we have to let her out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so what we started doing is changing Izzy's role. So instead of a human taking Griffey's role and making Izzy feel comfortable so that her behaviors would stay the same, not only did Griffey go away. But then we started nurturing the negative behaviors and the new role that Izzy had that she mm -hmm. doesn't want. You understand? Yeah. All right. And yeah. so that's why her behavior changed. Yeah. yeah. Guilty. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you, obviously you're very, like you said, very interested in the human psychology too, and it all is yeah. so tied in with the dog behavior. Yes. So how do you apply that to a, a, a client or a situation? Do you need to actually do some one-on-ones with, with the um, dog owner and kind of get their mind right before you can go into anything else as you would if you were trying to do physical training or training on somebody or, you right. know, somebody's doing some sort of weight loss diet. That it's, it seems like it all starts here. Totally. So I love that you use that analogy because I use nutrition and exercise with my clients as an analogy all the time. Uh, and my first job out of college uh, was a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. And what I loved about that and what I love about what I do is the, uh, it's the, the emotional um, change that happens in a human. Mm -hmm. So like the physical training thing, it wasn't really about the body. Like, oh my God, you got your abs. Like, good for you. It was more the mental change, the confidence, like the, the transformation the human went through mentally is mm -hmm. what like I really loved. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about my, my business. Bevel dog behavior is not a dog training business. It's a human education business. Mm -hmm. So do I spend time with the human? Yes. Tons. And what differenti differentiates me from, I think dog trainers is, um, you know, there's a lot of, I'm about to piss off some people, but 
whatever. That's right. That's what, it's kind of what I do. Yeah. <laughs> you think about your normal dog trainer. It's the the guy in the pony in the hat with a ponytail and a tree bag around his waist with cargo shorts and like hiking boots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. And that's that, so funny. That guy couldn't do corporate America because he fucking hates people and authority and whatever. Yeah. And so started a dog training business because and I hear this all the time. I love dogs more than people. Okay. Wrong business, bro. Yeah. Wrong bit because this is a people business. This yeah. is not a dog business. Yeah. Dogs are easy. Dogs don't lie. Mother Nature wrote the rules. I didn't. I don't teach anything that's mine. Nothing. Because I work within Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. Mother Nature wrote the rules. Mm -hmm. So all I do is teach people common sense. That's it. But I have to connect with people, relate to people, um, understand the root cause of why they're treating their dogs the way they are, and then be impactful enough for them to remember what I say, which is why I'm so blunt. Like I definitely have a reputation of being a little on the blunt side. Yeah. But I use that bluntness uh, to create impact mm -hmm. so that my clients remember what I said. Even if they feel guilty, good. Mm -hmm. Don't care. As long as you remember yeah. and you make changes and your dog is happier, I'm happy. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I spend a ton of time on, on the human education side, mm -hmm. uh, teaching them about dog psychology, how the, bra the dog's brain works. Um, you know, understanding the difference between training and behavior, understanding the difference between state of mind and what the body is doing. We spend tons of time teaching that stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love. But what's interesting is how it translates to your relationship, mm -hmm. how to parent your children. Um, you know, in the sports world, like I have, you know, some, some athlete and coach clients. And when I start talking to them about space, for example, um, they start going, oh, this is like defense. I'm like, yeah, it's like defense. Like if you can control, let's take basketball because I have a bunch of Mavericks clients. Um, the more you can control space on the court, the better you are defensively, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, boxing, I have a, a world champion boxer client. The more you can control the ring, uh, the better you, you are. And I mean, the announcers talk about that all the time, cutting off the ring, cutting mm -hmm. off the ring, cutting off. That's spatial control. Mm -hmm. And that's about knowing how to position your body to control space, right? Well, space in the animal world is one of the most important resources. Like if a dog is not starving or dehydrated, space is everything, which is what I was talking about earlier mm -hmm. with your Australian yeah. Shepherd. Right. So yes, I teach, 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 teach. And my favorite thing in the world is to hear a client say, uh, you know, obviously thank you so much for what you did, you know, for our family and the dog, but more importantly, like you changed my life. Wow. That's what I love. Yeah. And I've had, I mean, this is messed up, but like I've had clients quit jobs because of the process they went through with me because they realized they're not fulfilling themselves. Uh -huh. I've had clients get divorces or break up relationships because they realized they weren't honoring themselves. Yeah. Like, so it's, it's really like a transformative experience if you really want to go all in. Right. If you're someone who's just like fix my dog, that's yeah. really not, that's not what I do. Yeah, I, I, I can't fix your dog. I can help you fix your dog. Back to nutrition and exercise. I can tell you not to eat Twinkies for breakfast. Yeah. But if you eat Twinkies for breakfast, you might not get ripped. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I can only do so much. Yeah. So Bevel Dog Behavior is a human education business. I really love that. Yeah. 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 So tell us how we can have, you know, people who are psycho and have boxers and <laughs> all that kind of stuff can, can, can reach you. And, and, uh, I'm sorry. I called you. Psycho. It, no, that's okay. It's all right. I, I've I been called, you were right. I've been called. You were right. Much worse. <laughs> She's a good psycho. Way though. much worse. Um, how people can get in touch with you. Um, and you know, so beveldogbehavior.com. It's bevel like devil, but with a B. And two L's. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so the EVI. There we and go. The L. That's right. It's all there the same. Beveldogbehavior.com and then Instagram, you know, at Bevel Dog Behavior, YouTube, Bevel Dog Behavior. Um, yeah. And definitely, like, there's a ton of free content. We have a learn section on the website that has just a ton of like dog psychology, dog behavior 101 stuff, a lot of training tips. Um, I have an ebook called The Walk that breaks down exactly what I do to have a good walk with every dog that comes in. Um, there's a lot of really good content there. We have products, 
leashes and and raised beds okay. and things. So yeah, definitely go to the site. Yeah, cool. and and I I heard and saw you recently launched something about human and dog meditation. Yeah, that's so cool. You've got to be one of the only yes. ones doing that. Um, yeah, you know the the dog father. Uh-huh. of dog psychology is, C- is Caesar Milan. Uh-huh. And uh, I'd be remiss to not mention his name because uh, I work for him. Um, you know, controversial figure in the dog world because there's a lot of people out there who do not understand him. Uh-huh. Uh, but he is an absolute genius um, and gifted in ways that he could never even, I don't think, verbalize uh, because he's so instinctual and so good. And so... Um, he does teach a lot about uh, self-improvement, meditation, breathing, and how that impacts your relationship with your dog. Uh-huh. And so I've kind of just taken what he's taught me and and kind of done the Brad Bevel thing with it. And I've partnered with the Dallas Meditation Center director, Miguel Chin, um, and we're doing meditation classes. Uh, and it's insane because we have these like aggression cases, anxiety cases, fear cases, crazy dogs, right? And as soon as all the humans start to meditate and the vibe, the vibration of the yard starts to change, all the dogs just like fall asleep. So the dogs are like in meditating with the humans? Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. so I need to cool. start meditating. It's really cool. Me too. Yeah. So definitely like the way you breathe, the way you move. I mean, if I can take a leap. So if we have a dog who's reactive and crazy and with the human and then I take the leash and all of a sudden the dog calms down. Is that dog training? No. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just my energy is different. Yeah. And the dog trusts and is, I always say one end of the leash has to be modeling what we want. Okay. And it has to be the There's human. There's a good takeaway for our listeners. Yeah. yeah. Be calm. Mm-hmm. Relax. Breathe. Focus on posture. Yeah. So like just the way I move, it's more like a boat. Uh, but what I see a lot of my clients doing is they match the way the dog moves. So whenever you have like the little like schnauzer that like, moves it to, 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 to. yeah i noticed that the, the owner moves the same way right <laughs> you know <laughs> it's funny. like you need to be smooth and you need to breathe you need to just be that relax. constant calming presence yeah, for your dog to right. try and kind of model their behavior after direction yeah and protection love that's, it that's what they want yeah. i've learned a lot just i this, know me too i feel like i need to go meditate interview yeah yes. we need to meditate and we need to go sign up well brad we so appreciate you, more you about so much spacing. for being here Thank so you much for so much fun yeah um yeah beveldogbehavior.com all right right. awesome okay we end every show throw up the peace signs look in your camera yours is right there say mom game out one two three mom Mom game game out. out